Hello and welcome to Influence Church Online. We are so glad that you have joined us today. Wherever you're watching from, we are glad that you are with us today. Uh, I just want to um, read from Colossians chapter 1. It says, Giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. I just want to remind you today that this is good news, that God has uh, taken us out of the dominion of darkness uh, and set us into the kingdom of his light, into the kingdom of Jesus. This is reason to celebrate. This is a reason to get up from your sofa uh, and begin to, to shout and begin to worship and begin to praise God because he is faithful. So come on, let's give it all we've got today and worship God. As the daylight breaks, you're lighting up my way. My soul awakes to give you all the praise. Oh, I will trust in you. I will keep praising you through the night. Put my hope in you, you are the one who gives me life. You are the way, Jesus, you're the only way. Doesn't matter what they say to me, I believe in you. And so I praise, Jesus, I will give you praise. Doesn't matter what may come to me, I believe in you. You're taking all my fear and filling me with hope. I know you're near. Wherever I may go Oh, I will trust in you I will keep praising you through the night I put my hope in you You are the one who gives me life You are the way Jesus, you're the only way Doesn't matter what they say And so I praise Jesus, I will give you praise. Doesn't matter what they call me, I believe in you. Yeah. I'm holding on, I keep believing. No matter what, I keep on singing. Keep on praising. Oh, 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 oh. 
will give you praise Doesn't matter what may come in me I believe in you Yes, we believe in you Doesn't matter what may come in me, I believe in you. Doesn't matter what may come in me, I believe in you.
Jesus conquered death and grave alive in me worthy of all praise only Jesus this power in your name I know you may know it there is power on church that's the truth for us today that there is power in the name of Jesus and that power is available to us right now wherever we are whatever kind of seasons that we're going through whatever kind of miracle we need in our life right now whether that's a miracle for you personally, whether for someone who's close to you, whether it's just acknowledging that right now our nation, our world needs a miracle. But you know, one of the greatest miracles that God ever did was to send his son Jesus to come, to teach and to show the way and to build his church. And you know, something happens, something stirs up within the people of God when we gather together to worship, to lift up the holy name of Jesus. And we might not be able to gather physically right now, but we're gathered in purpose right now. We're united in one pursuit right now, just seeking after the heart of God. And let's just take some time right now just to glorify Him. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Corinthians chapter 2 the apostle Paul writes and he's quoting from the Old Testament from Isaiah and he says this no eye has seen no ear has heard no mind can even conceive what God has prepared for those who love him and you know we're going through something right now as as a world that no eye has seen no ear has heard it's something that we're all having to face and um, it, it's unique to us personally but one of the great things that unifies us is across the world people are, are dealing with this we haven't seen it we haven't heard of it before we haven't prepared for it but I love the promise of scripture that in the midst of something that is uncertain and unheard of for us God can still be moving in the midst of that no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared 
for those who love it. I want to encourage you right now in the midst of whatever is going on and how you're feeling to know that God is preparing something for you, that God wants to do something real and powerful in your life right now. So let's not allow our connection with God to become distant in this time. Right now, why don't we even right now pray and just believe that God is going to move today in your life and in your family. God, we thank you that although we are uncertain about what we're facing right now, that God, you are in the midst of this, that you are still in control and you have prepared for something. Uh, You have prepared those for those who love you. You've prepared something great and something powerful. And right now, God, we thank you that you can come and move. You can come and give us strength. You can come and give us peace. You can move in the midst of whatever else is going on because you are always in control. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. We might be on lockdown right now, but the church is in no way closed down. There is so much stuff happening at the moment. So before we get into what's coming up in the life of church this week, I want to take a moment to speak to our Barnard Castle congregation, because whether you remember it or not, today is our Barnard Castle birthday. We are eight years old as a church in Barnard Castle, and so wherever you are, take a moment to celebrate with our great Barnard Castle family. We love you, Barnard Castle. Love doing church in your community. We miss being with you at the moment, and we hope you're having an amazing Barnard Castle eighth birthday for Influence Church. Right now, we're going to get into church news and find out what's coming up in our online season of church. the most of this opportunity that we're in right now and so one of the new things that we've started in the last few weeks is COVID conversations on a Friday brought to you by Facebook and YouTube. The idea is that Ben and I are interviewing our friends around the world who are experts on certain aspects that right now we're facing and they look different. So already we've done one about marriage and about anxiety and mental health and there's loads more happening. So make sure every Friday you grab yourself a tea or coffee, sit down with your laptop or your iPhone or whatever you watch it on and get some input into yourself and listen to some wisdom that's going to feed your spirit. In this time, it is so key that we are growing ourselves spiritually. A great resource that will help you with this are are our daily devotions, which are available via our Influence app and also on our website at influencechurch.co.uk forward slash devotions. These will give you a great starter into your daily devotion with God, but I just want to encourage you, don't just stay with uh, the devotion, but why not use that as a springboard into your own daily devotion uh, and get into the word of God yourself. Uh, Begin to take your own thoughts on the certain passage that's been touched on in the daily devotion uh, and that will grow you, that will strengthen, strengthen you and that will feed your faith. Sunday, as well as our church online services, we have an amazing weekly feature called The Hangout. Seven o'clock every Sunday night, Pastor Ed is live on the Influence Church Instagram account, having some fun. It's like a virtual foyer where you can come and connect with people before our 8pm service, have a laugh, hear different people interview, have some fantastic features and get to spend a bit of time together in this virtual community. If you haven't yet got Instagram, it's really easy to get a social media account. Then find us at Influence Church. Come and follow and join us live every Sunday night at 7 p.m. for The Hangout. Well, that is all for church news today. Unless you have your own important news, then why not write that in the comments today? I'm sure we would all love to hear what's happening in your life. But from Influence Church, that is it. We will see you next week. every Influence Church service, we create an opportunity for you to give financially to the work of church. If this is your first time watching today or you're not prepared, we don't want you to feel any compulsion to give. We're just so glad that you've tuned in and are watching today. But for those of you who do want to contribute financially to the work of church, we want to direct you to influencechurch.co.uk forward slash giving. That's the giving page on our website. There you can find out how to give online and also lots 
lots of different other ways that you can give during this time. If we unpack for a moment what it means to be a Christian, or we unpack for a moment what the word Christian means, it means at its core to be like Christ, to do the things he does and to act the way he does. And we can be like Christ in all kinds of ways. We can be like Christ in how we forgive one another. We can be like Christ in how we put other people first or how we choose, how we choose to react in, in certain situations. But one of the, the best ways we can be like Christ is in how we give. He, because you see, right from the start, our God is a giving God. He gave when he created the world. He gave when he sent his son Jesus into the world to die on the cross for us. We have a God who gives and gives and gives and never stops giving so if we're going to be like Christ in the best possible way we can that needs to include some sense of giving in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 it says this God demonstrated his love for us in that whilst we were still sinners Christ died for us hey church we serve a God who gives and gives and never stops giving we are most like Christ when we are sacrificially giving when we're giving of our time, when we're giving of our energy, when we're giving of our resources, and when we're giving financially. You see, when we sow into the house of God, we are facilitating the advancement of his kingdom. We're facilitating his word going out, out into the world. We're facilitating the hungry being fed and, and the poor being cared for and all kinds of things that, that, that are entailed in, in what the church does. We're facilitating God's kingdom being established here in the world and it's such a privilege that that we get to do this so as we as we give today church i want to invite you to give let's let's remember that as we give we are we are being christians we are doing the christian thing we are being like jesus in our giving my name is lauren and three years ago i had my first panic attack I didn't know what was happening to me, I was scared, I fell into a deep depression, I had the worst anxiety and I just completely shut down emotionally and physically and it reached a point where every hour of every day I was having a panic attack and panic became my norm, it, it was built into my routine, it was exhausting and as a result this was a battle that eventually led to a struggle with suicide and this was by all accounts the worst thing that has ever happened to me. But in the midst of my panic, in the midst of my anxiety, I found a light at the end of the tunnel. That light was, and is, Jesus. Now don't get me wrong, I still have my bad days. But now I'm equipped to live above my feelings, because I focus my eyes on things above. I am no longer intimidated by fear, because God has got a hold of me and promises he will fight all my battles. I often describe anxiety as, as having a head that's on fire but no one can see the flames. Well, Jesus is in that fire. He stands in the face of my fear, in the face of my panic, my depression, and he declares that my chains will be broken. The reality is that, that God doesn't promise a life that's easy. Jesus himself suffered, but he does promise to be the one we can depend on when things get tough. You know, in our weakness, Jesus is so strong. I've learned that, that God will always fight my fear. I know that when I wanted to die, Jesus was still in battle fighting for me. And now the Bible, it's my weapon. You know, worship is my soundtrack. Prayer is my escape. There is no mountain that God cannot move. He, he is my healing. He is my strength. He is my refuge. He is my rest. He is the complete embodiment of peace. He, he's so good. And I feel forever changed by the things that he has done in my life.
Now, this is undoubtedly a, a weird and different time, but there's a lot of good things that are actually happening as well. Uh, good things for our kids are that uh, I have taken up baking, um, not good for my weight, but really good for the kids that they're eating baking stuff all the time and better meals. I think it's my way of kind of coping is to just make a lot of food. We've got Disney Plus, which they've asked for for a while and we've suddenly caved. So Star Wars is on repeat in our house all the time. Uh, ben, my husband has been looking in the garage and found his old PS2 which is 20 years old. It's one of the ways he wooed me to become his wife, his skills on Tony Hawk's. And the good thing is he's still got it. He is still good at Tony Hawk's and all those games. So there's good things that are happening. One of my favorite weird things that's happened in this time are the memes that are coming out. I like a good meme. I am of that age. My children tell me where I appreciate memes. I think that's not a compliment like it sounds. Uh, and, and I asked on my Facebook uh, the, the people of the world to suggest their favorite memes and people did not disappoint. I had over 70 memes sent to me, distracted me and entertained me for the entire day where I needed to be working. But I want to show you a couple of the best memes that have been created for this lockdown. Here's the first one. It's a brilliant one. Uh, here is the second one. Uh, and one of the good things about memes, a good meme has an ounce of truth in it. And this is the third one I want to talk about today. It talks about the celebrities' boats and our boats. We're all in the same boat, celebrities say, but ours look a little bit different to theirs. And I actually saw that and it started to get me to think a little bit about it. I don't know if you've ever been inspired by memes, but uh, apparently that's now how I'm writing sermons. The Bible is in it. Don't turn off and go to other churches. I promise you there's some spiritual depth in this as well. But here's the thing. We are all in the same storm, but we're not all in the same boat. Some people's boats, if you like, have gardens. And so the idea of you can't go out much, it's annoying and frustrating, but you've got a garden and so it's, it's bearable. For some people, they don't have a garden or, or a big house. And so for them, this is difficult. For some people, they already have anxiety and so throwing what's happening now their boat is looking a lot scarier and, and struggling more than other people for some people the homeschooling boat is going really well they are the parents that have the the the, the timetables on the wall and the chalkboard walls and the, the beautifully laid out stationery and other parents are praying daily and interceding that they just get through the day because it's not so easy in their boat to do the homeschooling. Some people are desperate for it to end because they want to stop being on the front line and facing this, this disease every day. Other people want it to end because they want to go to coffee shops and have some level of normality again. All of us are in the same storm. We're all facing the same disease. We're all facing the same lockdown right now, but we're all managing it in different ways. And the way we're navigating looks a little bit different. And you know what? That's okay. This is a weird time. There has never been a day like this before in a time like this. And one day, our grandkids are going to be learning about this time because it's different. And so I want to encourage you, if you're finding this a little bit hard right now, or even a lot hard, it's okay. This is unusual. This is a pandemic, and it's not like a time we've had before. And so if you're feeling like overwhelmed and this is difficult, just take heart. The Bible says this. It's a great scripture for this time. It says in John 16, verse 33, I have told you these things so that you may have peace in this time. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart because I've overcome the world. There is light at the end of this tunnel. Take heart, for I have overcome the world. Jesus says there will be trouble. And right now we can look around the world, we can see the news, we can go into Tesco and know there is trouble in our midst. We are in the season of a storm right now that is unprecedented, to use the government word, but we can take heart and know the ending. One of the difficult things in all this is, is there's no absolute answers. We keep asking things like, well, when will it end? How is lockdown going to finish? When will schools go back? When will the sickness stop? When will there be a vaccine? And the truth is this, you can spend hours on the internet researching these things and the reality is nobody knows. But this we do know, that we can take heart because he has overcome the world. He knows the ending and it's going to be okay. And the Bible talks about storms quite a lot. I want to read you a scripture today about a storm that happened in the Bible. It's in Matthew chapter 8 verse 23. It says this, then he got into a boat, the then the he is Jesus. The disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up from the lake so that the waves swept over the boat, swept over the boat. 
But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him and said, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, you have little faith. Why are you so afraid? And then he got up. He rebuked the wind and the waves and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. It's an incredible scripture that talks about waves. It talks about storms. It talks about a season of uncertainty. These men in this boat, many of them were fishermen. So storms and navigating storms was not a new concept to them. They'd probably been out many times in storms before and faced difficulty and learned skills and tools and ability to kind of navigate this storm. But this one was different. This season we're in right now is different. I've spoken to many people who said, look, I thought I had a handle on my anxiety. I thought I was over these things. And suddenly from nowhere, it feels like it's just come back. I thought I could sleep well. And suddenly my sleep has been taken away from me again. I thought I could teach a room full of 30 kids. And suddenly my one child, I can't teach them. Well, that's because this is different. This is not a usual sort of storm that any of us have faced before. And the other thing is this, we all handle it differently. When I was 11 years old, we had our first big family trip abroad. We went to Spain and uh, I was so excited about it. I was in year six, kind of just going to transition to high school. And we planned for this for a while and I was so excited. I couldn't sleep the night before. And for some reason, I think because we were taking the car, we were going to go on a boat to Spain. I don't know if you knew they could do that, but it takes 24, 25 hours to get there. We drove right down to the end of the country to the, the godless south, as my husband would say, uh, and we, we drove onto a boat. And I was so excited, not just about the destination, but about the journey. My dad was in the merchant navy, and so it was like boats are in my veins. I had been on rowboats before and enjoyed that experience. And this boat was a different sort of boat. It wasn't some kind of little tiny thing. It was massive. This boat had a soft play center, which being 11 years old, I was far too mature to go to, but I kind of wanted to go in the ball pool because everyone loves a ball pool. Uh, there was uh, shops on there. There were restaurants. There was all sorts of things. There was a cinema. This was going to be the most exciting thing ever. We had a, a room that we were going to sleep in and it was so good. And as we arrived, this boat was so huge. I remember feeling so excited. We drove onto the boat in our car. We got off the, out of the car. We walked to the place. And I remember thinking, I, I don't feel so good. And looking at my brother and sister and thinking, well, they must feel the same as me. This is not good. This isn't how I expected to feel. And looking at my dad and thinking, well, he's all right on boats, but my mum must be feeling the same. And realizing quite quickly, it was only me that was affected. This was like nearly 30 years ago. And I still remember the feeling of, I think I'm going to faint. Because the, the whole swaying motion made my whole head spin and my whole stomach spin. And I realized I am not good. Here's a problem with a boat. Once you're on it, you've got to stay on it. And so I had looming in front of me 24 hours of feeling like I'm just going to collapse. No one else seemed to be bothered by it, but I was really affected by it. My mum, bless her, tried all different things to distract me. We went to get some air. I think I had an ice lolly. And in the end, she said, let's just distract you. Let's go to the cinema. And at the cinema, I am that old that they were showing Hook. You know, the Peter Pan film, great film, I'm sure. I've never watched the end of it because what happened midway through Hook is me and a French man had a terrible encounter for him because um, all the seasickness caught up with me into his hood. And I ran out of there uh, and was very, very ill. And because we we're on a boat, there was no way to kind of stop. And it it was just awful. And what I realized then is one circumstance, one place can affect one person very differently and other people almost nothing at all. So maybe right now you're thinking, look, I'm feeling so overwhelmed by this storm, but my partner or my kids or my connect leader seem completely unfazed. Well, one, that may not be true. And two, that's okay. Different storms, different waves affect people differently. Some of the disciples in that story were freaking out and panicking. And meanwhile, Jesus is asleep, completely, seemingly unfazed. How could he sleep through the storm? I think if the disciples, if I picture what it was like that, I think they kind of ran down to where he was and maybe looked at him a little bit cross, a little bit agitated, thinking if there was ever a time, Jesus, to do something, it would be right now. And what are you doing napping on the job? I think they probably coughed very loudly. You could probably do that back in the day. Uh, they probably pulled his pillow out and, and nudged him a little bit. And then when he woke up, oh, I'm sorry to wake you up, but, you know, we're going to die. Perhaps you could do something. And Jesus' response is just brilliant. He just says, hey, you have little faith. 
because Jesus understands that this storm, although the circumstance was difficult, it wasn't going to overtake them. And God never promises that everything to get to the destination will be easy. Right now, things are not easy. Some of us are facing issues with work or finances, or our family is struggling a little bit, or our kids are overwhelmed and we're having to parent and navigate that as well. God never said it's going to be easy, but what he promises is that he will be in the boat with us. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather have a boat that is seemingly unimpressive, but having the creator of the world in my boat with me, even if it seems like he's asleep and doing nothing, he still has the power to change everything. And right now, perhaps you're worrying about things. I was thinking about worry earlier, and I thought worry is a little bit like going on a treadmill. I don't own a treadmill. Maybe you have a treadmill good for you. Um, but uh, treadmills are like worry. You kind of get exhausted being on them. They take you nowhere and they're a little bit pointless in my opinion. And worry is like they don't do anything, it doesn't change much. I guess eventually if you go on it for a lot it changes your body and all that sort of stuff. And actually worry does change you internally. It stops you sleeping, it stops your stomach functioning in the right sort of way. But actually talking to Jesus, explaining, asking him for help, he can calm the storm that is within you right now. And maybe right now it feels like there's a storm happening. I want to encourage you that Jesus is in your boat. He has not left you. He never forsakes you. He's with you. And Psalm 121 says this, he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. We can trust that he is not asleep. He's not absent. And in that story, he was having a nap because he was confident that this isn't it. This will end this one day will be a memory that is talked about in history books, but it won't be forever. The world won't stop. One day, this will be a memory that you've lived through and walked through, and you're going to come out different and stronger, and I know that Jesus wants to help us with it. Another story in the Bible about storms is um, this story in Matthew 14, uh, and Jesus has just had this incredible um, encounter with people. He's just fed 5,000 people with loaves and fishes. He's had this amazing miracle. And I don't know about you, but when you've had a big win spiritually or, or in any way, really, you're kind of on a high and you're kind of living on the euphoria of all the things that have happened. And so you'd think the disciples will be in that sort of state. They've just seen a massive miracle that years, thousands of years later, we're still talking about. And this is what happens. Verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and go ahead to him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went to the mountain to pray. And the boat was already considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. So there's wind again. There's a storm brewing. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking there, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. And they cried out in fear. It's a ghost? That's their first reaction. This is Jesus, who's been with them now for a long time, doing incredible miracles. And yet they'd never seen the whole walk in the water thing before, but they'd just seen him perform this amazing, incredible miracle. And now they're seeing him walk in the water. And their first reaction is it must be a ghost rather than it's the son of God who we've seen do incredible things before. Storms never change God. God is unchanging. He's faithful. He's consistent. He is always good. He's always there. But what storms do is they change our perspective. They change how we see God. We panic in a way that is, is just different because the, the, the storm is noisy. I, I used to really be quite scared of flying. And uh, I remember talking to someone once and, and part of what we usually do is we, we um, get the privilege of traveling a little bit. And all that we used to, we've just had several things cancel. Um, and one of the things that someone told me once, which is really helpful, when I talked to them about why I get scared of flying, I just said, I, I don't understand it. And when I don't understand things, I, I get more nervous of things. And I just said, there's always noises and sometimes the plane moves and does that whole turn thing, which I guess needs to happen unless you want to go straight somewhere. And I just said, I don't, I don't know what's, what's scary and all these things. And their advice was this, watch the cabin crew. If the cabin crew look calm, you're going to be okay. If they panic, then you panic. And you know, for the last few years, I've put that into practice. Every time there's a bump or there's a jolt or there's kind of this, this whirly noise that I don't understand and I'm never going to take the time to learn to understand airplanes. Uh, I'm not good at that sort of thing. Uh, but I look at the cabin crew and they're still smiling. They're still giving out the pretzels and they're still giving you coke that's very flat and they're doing things and they're still living their life. And then suddenly I know it's going to be okay. 
Jesus was on that boat looking okay. Jesus is walking on that water and he's just walking because he owns the water. He owns all this stuff. So of course he can have the authority and the ability to walk on the water. But when they see him, they panic. Let's not let this season make us panic so much that we miss what Jesus is doing. And then we get to Peter, good old Peter, who's just a little bit on the extreme side. Jesus says in verse 27, take courage, it's I. Don't be afraid. And I want to encourage you that, that Jesus is saying that to us right now. Take courage. It's I. Don't be afraid. Don't be overwhelmed by this situation. Lord, if it's you, Peter said, then tell me to come to you on the water. That is a bizarre request, I would say. But Jesus indulges them. He says, come. So Peter gets down at the boat, walks in the water and came towards Jesus. So I reckon that that's probably a very English way of explaining it. What we know of Peter is a bit extreme. And so I reckon he kind of jumped out. I think he probably did a little bit of dancing. Maybe he moonwalked. It was invented then. Maybe he did all the sort of dancing. Maybe it was like the first best TikTok ever in the world. He did this whole thing and he's like there and he's loving it. And he's watching Jesus and he's like, this is going to be one that I tell the grandkids. This is amazing. And then... He saw the wind, verse 30, and he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. What happened in that moment is this. Peter, who was confidently walking on the water, looking at Jesus, thinking, if Jesus is there, I want to be there. Suddenly he changes his perspective and he looks at the wind. And I don't blame Peter. Wind on a boat in the middle of a lake or whatever they were on is noisy, this season right now is noisy. It screams fear and terror. I went to Tesco the other week and I came out a little bit wrecked and I like shopping, but I don't at the moment because everything around you feels oppressive and difficult and like just reminds you this is not normal and it's loud. And I think Peter looked and saw the circumstance and thought this doesn't make sense. How can I be doing this? And so he started to sink. And I want to tell you, there's been times where I've looked at the news and I've looked at stats and I felt like I'm starting to sink almost. But Jesus' response is so good. Immediately, immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And then they climbed into the boat and the wind died down. Jesus' response is so beautiful. He doesn't kind of say, well, I'm going to see what you do now. He doesn't stand and just let Peter kind of work it out for himself. He doesn't chastise him. He doesn't say, what are you playing at? He doesn't leave him. He reaches down and lifts him and says, come on, you've got to believe in me. I'm here. I'm not letting you go anywhere. And that's how Jesus operates in the space of storms. He reaches down and looks after us. He's the God who reached down from heaven to a broken earth and said, come on, I want you with me. And maybe you're looking at your circumstance and thinking, if I had a bigger house, if I had a different job, if my partner had a different job, if I had a partner, if I was younger, if I was older, if I didn't have these kids, if I had, and we're looking and we're comparing and we're thinking, if I had these things, then I'd cope better. I want to encourage you that the way to cope better is to know that Jesus is in your boat. He's on your side. He's reaching down saying, come on. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I have dominion over this. Jesus didn't cause it, but he can still bring good in the midst of it. I want to encourage you that God is still at work in this season. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He's a good God and he wants to help you. The Bible says, cast your cares on him because he cares for you. And that has not changed or stopped in this season. So if you're struggling right now, I would encourage you to just remember that Jesus is with you and talk to him. That treadmill of worry makes you anxious and doesn't change much. But talking to Jesus suddenly shifts your eyes off the perspective, suddenly stops looking at the wind and the waves and the stuff that's happening and brings your focus back to Jesus who says, hey, look, you've not been through this before, but I've been here from the beginning of time. I've, I've walked people through wars and famines and difficulties and struggles and feeling of loneliness and isolation, and I am with you. There is no isolation that can take you away from the presence of Jesus. You may feel right now, I can't see people, but he is with you and he wants to be able to hear you and listen to you. And so maybe you've been a Christian for a long time I want to remind you that he wants to hear you. And so speak to him. Tell him your worries. Bring your petitions to God with praise and thanksgiving. Ask him to help you. Ask him to give you courage in this season. Or perhaps for you, you've never really talked about God before. You never really thought about God. You're just watching church right now because someone's invited you for whatever. I want to tell you that Jesus loves you, that he wants to help you, 
and reassure you in this season. And if you want to say yes to Jesus in this time, all I want you to do is uh, we're going to ask you to write yes in the comment box and go to a website that says influencechurch.co.uk forward slash yes. That will unlock some videos for you to watch to understand more about what it is to be a Christian and walk through this, not alone, but with Jesus. The world tells us we need to isolate and there is a lot of wisdom in that. We need to stay home if you're able to and all those things the government is saying. But let's isolate with Jesus. Because believe me, I would rather be in any boat, whether it's big or small, as long as Jesus is with me. And maybe you're struggling right now. I want to tell you Jesus is in it with you. He doesn't leave you. He doesn't just watch you. He wants to reach down and say, come on, I want to help you have faith in this season. So if you're thinking, I need something, I need to not be facing this on my own. It's, it's too much for me. Take heart because he's overcome the world and he wants to help you. So just comment below. I'm going to pray and then we're going to finish. Lord God, we thank you that there is no storm too big for you to handle. God, thank you that we read about a, a Jesus who speaks to wind and to waves and stops these things happening. God, we pray for every person experiencing an internal storm right now, the storm that feels like it's overtaking them, the storm of worry and anxiety. God, we pray peace in the name of Jesus. In the same way that Jesus spoke to the storm and said, calm down. We just pray right now that, that people's internal storms will calm in the name of Jesus and that things will just settle. God, we thank you that we can take heart in the truth that knows that you have overcome the world. We don't know the details. We don't know how it's going to work out, but we can stand on the truth that says you are there with us. You never leave us and you never forsake us. And you want to with each one of us. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. We have loved having you. And if you wanted to respond to uh, the message today, then why not head over to influencechurch.co.uk forward slash yes. It will be the best decision of your life to get Jesus into your life. Uh, and also, um, don't forget to stay connected. There, there are loads of things happening throughout the week on either Facebook, Instagram, or via our Influence Church mobile app. There is no um, excuse for you to be a stranger or to be alone in the times that we're in at the moment. So head over there. And we will be back here next Sunday. It's going to be great. So see you then. Invite someone to church next week.